what's the best place uh, to put your money joining us with his 2020 vision? Russ Kosterich, portfolio manager of BlackRock's Global Allocation Fund. Russ, uh, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you. Happy holidays. Uh, likewise, before we dive into the particular picks of where to put your money, what, what is your outlook for the economy next year? We think the economy looks fairly solid. Uh, it's not going to be a return to the late 90s. We're not expecting a rapid acceleration in growth. We do think that between the strength of the U.S. consumer, uh, which we saw more, more evidence of that today again in the GDP numbers, and the pivot by the world's central banks earlier in the year, the basic underpinnings of the global economy look relatively stable, and it should be a year of, year of decent, uh, maybe uninspiring, but decent growth for the global economy. And, and so that means uh, stay in equities, does it? It does mean stay in equities. Uh, I think the real question for 2020 comes down to when are those gains likely to occur and what types of equities are going to do best. Would you stick with some of the winners? I mean, as I just look at the Nasdaq 100 performance this year, up 37 percent year to date, yeah. those big tech names still look attractive to you? I think for the most part they do, not all parts of tech. But, you know, we're still in an environment where there are segments of the economy, and I would name technology, communications, healthcare, parts of the consumer discretionary space that are benefiting from very powerful secular tailwinds. This is where we see cash flow generation, we see profitability, we see sustainability and earnings growth. And if we're still in an environment where it's decent growth, but it's not the type of growth that produced the value rally in late 16, then we still believe a lot of those secular growers like technology, you want to stick with them into 2020. What about overseas equities? Overseas is going to be a bit trickier. Uh, you know, this has really been a decade where the U.S. has dominated. Uh, we expect that to continue into 2020. That said, we know most investors have too much equity in the U.S. We would diversify. Outside of the country, we see some of the best opportunities in Asia, particularly in emerging markets. One of the places we've been overweight in the global allocation portfolio has been China. It's been a bit of a rough ride, but you've seen some tremendous performance out of the more domestically oriented companies, uh, particularly in areas like Internet commerce, which is just taking off in Asia. So speaking of domestic versus international, if you look at your expectations for the dollar, how would that play into your theory for 2020 and what makes sense here? So the dollar is always critical. Uh, you know, the first thing to think about with the dollar is the dollar does affect financial conditions. It does affect liquidity. Uh, if we had a much stronger dollar, I think that would be a bit of a headwind for U.S. equities, but that's not our base case for 2020. And part of the reason for that is we think the Fed is on hold. We also think that some of the softness we've seen in Europe is probably past us a little bit of a better growth environment, which means a flat to a weaker dollar. And that should, again, support some of those emerging markets uh, that we spoke about a moment ago.